Honorable Minister, GAS Star, C.G. Reisman, distinguished guests, members of the press, good morning. I thought in the few minutes as we get settled here, I would invite you to consider three universal truths about events like this. The first is that in order for an event like this to happen, someone needs to have the idea and the vision and understand the need to make an event like this come to fruition. So, Council General Reifman, we thank you and your team for the leadership for bringing us all here to Hyderabad and for helping to make this all happen. The second universal truth is that in order to make an event like this successful, you have to have the speakers and our sponsors who make it all possible. So for the speakers and our panelists, thank you for your willingness to come together today and share with us your subject matter expertise. It is indispensable to the discussion. And to our sponsors, a special word of thanks. We could not stage an event like this without your support. So our bronze sponsors are Alpha Design Technologies, BAE Systems, Beltan, and Fortinet. Our silver sponsor is Raytheon, and our gold sponsor, a special thanks to Lockheed Martin. The third universal truth, of course, that about an event like this is it's wonderful to have an idea, and it's great to have speakers, but if we don't have an audience, then there's really no one to hear. So we thank all of you for spending your time with us over the next two days and your interest in hearing about U.S.-India defense ties. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Patrick Santillo, and I'm the Strategic Advisor for the Business Council for International Understanding, or BCIU. We are a 220-plus member business organization that conducts activities really around the globe trying to bring businesses and governments together and businesses and businesses together. So we are delighted to be here in Hyderabad. We're very pleased to have the trust from the consulate to allow us to work with them to stage this event. We have terrific partners in SIDM and CII without whom we could not do an event of this magnitude and we wish to thank them. In conclusion, I really have both a job and a joy. My job is to make two administrative announcements, so I'll do that now if I may. I would ask you to silence your phone if you have them, and I would ask if you need to make a call that you could make it outside of the conference area if you would. So please do silence your phones. I would also like to let everyone know that the proceedings today and tomorrow will be recorded, uh, at least audio and perhaps for some time video as well, but please be aware of that. The joy part of my job this morning is simply to introduce our first speaker. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the Consul General. The full bios are in the handouts that we have given everybody, so for time's sake, we're not going to read all of the bios, but it's very clear that Consul General Reichman has extensive experience You'll see from his bio that he has both military and State Department experience, so he really is uniquely qualified to share with us his perspective and to help us set the stage for the current state of U.S.-India ties and a look at the future. So with that, Council General Reichman, thank you again, and please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Patrick, for that kind introduction, and thank you all for joining us for the U.S.-India Defense Ties Conference in Hyderabad, the very first conference of its kind um, in this vital region for U.S.-India ties. Uh, for the U.S.-India Economic Partnership, educational exchange, shared learning, collaboration through business, research, and innovation. I want to extend my appreciation to our partners in putting this event together, including the Business Council for International Understanding and the Confederation of Indian Industry, and also our, our sponsors here, uh, which we couldn't have done this without you. 
Uh, I want to thank Deputy Assistant Secretary Joel Starr for traveling from Washington uh, to contribute to this important conversation about our shared interest. It is perfect timing that this conference is taking place now on the eve of the U.S.-India 2 plus 2 dialogue in Washington, D.C. The 2 plus 2 dialogue is the principal mechanism for translating a strong U.S.-India relationship into real, tangible outcomes. With this conference, we're making that a 2 plus 2 plus 1. Last year, the 2 plus 2 dialogue led to agreements that significantly bolstered information sharing and allowed for the transfer of critical defense technology. Recently, the defense relationship between our two countries was strengthened even further by the successful completion of Tiger Triumph, the first tri-service military exercise in our two nations' histories. And I was very, very pleased to personally be there in Vishakhapatnam to witness the collaboration between 500 uh, U.S. airmen, Marines, and sailors, and 1,200 uh, Indian sailors, airmen, and soldiers. India is clearly one of our most important partners in the Indo-Pacific region. As principal deputy, as actually as the senior bureau official, uh, Alice Wells, uh, and she is the, the senior official in the Department's Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs, she noted last week that the United States and India have built a strong partnership that helps uphold international norms, builds prosperity, helps to counter terrorism, and advances our shared interests in Asia and beyond. The objective of this two-day conference is to build on recent successes in the U.S.-India defense relationship, to provide a high-level platform to discuss avenues for increased U.S.-India collaboration in the defense space, especially in the private sector and to help participants gain a deeper understanding of how we can leverage the U.S.-India agreements would, in which we've already invested to accomplish more. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Joel Starr, who is the U.S. Deputy Assistant, uh, Assistant Secretary of State uh, from the Bureau of Political and Military Affairs. And uh, I'm especially pleased to welcome him because it's great to have another Joel in the room, and it's also great to have a, another uh, JAG who is a, a, a military attorney, because we both share that, and legislative background. So with that, uh, please extend a warm welcome to Joel Starr. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you, Council General uh, Reckman Joel. And uh, thank you for the invitation today. How's that? Good? Can everybody hear me? Thank you. Thank you for the invitation today to be here at the U.S.-India Defense Ties Conference. And it's a pleasure to speak to you today as the new Deputy Assistant Secretary for Regional Security in the Bureau of Political and Military Affairs, as we call it, the PM Bureau. Uh, before I address the security relationship between India and the United States, uh, may I speak briefly about uh, what PM's role is at the Department of State. The Bureau of Political and Military Affairs integrates diplomacy and defense, forging strong international partnerships to meet shared security challenges. Regulating arms transfers and defense trade, directing security assistance, building partner capacity, negotiating security agreements, exchanging personnel with the Department of Defense to straighten the defense diplomacy relationship. These are just some of the PM efforts to further United States security policy. As the U.S.-India partnership grows stronger, uh, PM hopes to play a key role in working with our Indian partners to strengthen the defense ties between our two great nations. The growing U.S.-India strategic partnership is broad and multifaceted and it has grown deeper under the leadership of President Trump and Prime Minister Modi. As enshrined in our national security strategy, the United States welcomes India's emergence as a leading global power and its role as a net security provider in the region. India is one of our most important partners in the Indo-Pacific region. The U.S.-India partnership stands upon a shared commitment to the rule of law, freedom of navigation, 
democratic values and economic growth. India's contributions toward capacity building, peacekeeping, and humanitarian assistance into disaster relief operations have been essential to ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific and upholding the rules-based international order worldwide. Likewise, its participation in bilateral and multilateral exercises across the region has brought great benefits to its partners. I am confident that the strong and upward trajectory of our partnership will continue, as mentioned by the Consul General and as evidenced by the success of our first ever tri-service military exercise, Tiger Triumph, the security ties between the United States and India can only grow stronger. Defense trade is a key area that can strengthen the security relationship between our two nations. The United States sees defense trade as a tool to strengthen security. At the same time, it also reinforces our strategic partnership through greater interaction and interoperability between our forces and builds greater understanding between our defense establishments on shared threats. U.S. foreign military sales and co-production with Indian industry yield significant benefits to both India's national security and to American and Indian workers. Bilateral defense trade today between India and the United States is estimated to reach $16 billion, as everybody in this room is very aware of, from essentially zero in 2008. And we hope to see that trade increase in the years to come. This trade also makes Indian military forces more capable partners, which is why as India restructures its forces, we want to continue to offer the highest quality, most dependable, and most technologically advanced products on the market to India. U.S. foreign military sales yield significant benefits to both India's national security and American and Indian workers. To this end, the United States government has enabled American companies to export more high technology items to India, including cutting edge defense platforms like armed unmanned aerial vehicles and ballistic missile defense systems. India, for example, was the first non-treaty partner to be offered the Sea Guardian unmanned aerial system manufactured by General Atomics. Capabilities such as the Chinook helicopter and the M777 howitzer are already fielded by the Indian military and operates the largest fleet of P-8 and C-17 aircraft outside of the United States. The United States also appreciates India's effort to develop its own manufacturing base. A capable and vibrant Indian defense manufacturing base is in our mutual best interest. And it helps increase India's military capability and capacity while also contributing to the global supply chain of democratic defense manufacturers. The Defense Technology and Trade Initiative, or the DTTI, has been a very important process as we work together to focus on areas of co-development and specific capabilities that will benefit both of our armed forces. Most recently in October, our leadership identified projects that include light small arms technologies, C-Link advanced analytics, and air-launched UAVs as areas for future cooperation. Uh, may I now speak to a few specific defense trade items. Since declaring India a major defense partner in 2016, we have made a number of unprecedented decisions to advance systems that, should India choose the American solution, will bring tangible national security benefits to the United States and India. Unmanned aerial systems, national advanced surface-to-air missile systems, naval helicopters, and naval guns are all part of a steady improving U.S.-India defense trade relationship. The Indian Air Force and Navy fighter competitions are a once-in-a-generation opportunity to more closely align the United States and India. During her 2018 visit to the United States, uh, Minister Sitaraman acknowledged that the, quote, generational change, end quote, that can occur when fighter pilots receive the best training opportunities with the most technologically advanced aircraft is to everyone's advantage. We strongly agree. We strongly believe that in choosing U.S. fighter aircraft presents an opportunity to not only fulfill military requirements, but to deepen our partnership. For the fighter competitions, the United States will offer some of the best technology widely employed by our Navy and Air Force, the F-18 Super Hornet, F-21, which is tailored by the Indian Air Force. U.S. fighter aircraft would bolster India's defense capabilities, expand its defense industrial base, 
and position it as a supplier in the global defense sales ecosystem shared by our network of allies and partners. In conclusion, the security relationship between India and the United States continues to grow. From increasing military cooperation, exercises, defense trade, the United States will continue to work with India to ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific region. It is my sincere hope that the work we undertake here today will contribute to this upward trajectory, and I want to thank you again for the invitation to speak here and the opportunity to participate. The State Department greatly values engagements like these, which enable us to uh, talk to you in person and get your feedback. And on a personal note, lastly, uh, I first visited your beautiful country in 2000, 19 years ago. And I think everybody in this room was around here probably at that time and know that it was an evolving relationship. But I actually wanted to go back further and so I was rereading Ambassador uh, Kenneth Galbraith's uh, uh, book called Ambassador's Journal. And he said back in those days, which was, as everyone would agree, quite different. There were many different challenges. Some of them remain today. And he said that he was always approached by reporters and he was the ambassador during the Kennedy administration from 61 to 63. And he was always uh, asked by reporters, uh, what is our relationship with uh, India? What's, what is it? Is it good, bad, indifferent, non-alignment policy? What is it? And the ambassador would always come back and say, why do you keep asking me this question? It's presupposing that there's something extremely dangerous between the U.S. and India relationship. In fact, the U.S. and India are quiet and steadfast friends. That was back in 1963. Fast forward 56 years, I want to change that view because it is evolving. And I would say that instead of quiet and steadfast friends, well, I can say this, we're certainly not quiet, uh, evidenced by the, I think, great relationship between your prime minister and our president. Uh, the personal does identify and influence the, uh, pro uh, the professional as well. But I would say that instead of quiet and steadfast friends, we are in fact close and ever stronger steadfast friends. Thank you very much. I turn it back over to Joel. These microphones are easy to get tangled up in. They're for taller people. But one of the distinct pleasures of serving as the Consul General in Hyderabad is the opportunity to work with our next speaker, who is Minister K.T. Rama Rao, otherwise known as KTR. And he currently serves as the Minister of, of Industries, Information Technology, and Commerce for the state of Telangana. Um, KTR shares many ties with the United States. First, he holds an MBA from Baruch College in the City University of New York. And he also worked in the technology sector in the greater New York area. And you'll be hearing um, about, you know, what you, those of you who had the opportunity to visit uh, Lockheed Martin and uh, other facilities of Boeing, um, and you'll see what a successful defense cluster that uh, Telangana has assembled. And you'll also hear about something called TSI Pass. Um, and and I, I want to tell you, I've worked around the world in 25 years. Um, and during that time, I have not seen a more strategic vision for assembling defense clusters, IT clusters, and biotech clusters than that spearheaded by Minister KTR. Um, it's truly, truly impressive. And I remember my second day on the job, I had the, the privilege of being on hand when Amazon headquarters opened up. Their largest office building in the world, um, which, which houses 15,000 employees. That project was approved in 11 days. Um, that is a world-beating record. I also, a few weeks later, had the pleasure of being on hand for the opening of Micron Technologies' new headquarter. And from the time of approval to the time of the ribbon cutting was a year. So this really is a testament to the effectiveness of, of Minister KTR. And um, I think that, that it was as we focus on defense firms, that partnership between U.S. and Indian firms will continue to grow, and both of our countries will continue to benefit. Um, and a key part of that is in Hyderabad. Um, 
because of the synergies that are developing here. So we hope that this conference allows all of us to continue to build on past successes and to further cement government and commercial ties that have enabled our unique friendship to flourish. Uh, KTR is a friend and partner to the United States, and we intend for our partnership to advance the prosperity of the United States and India together. So without further ado, it's my distinct pleasure to invite Minister KTR. Good morning. Welcome you all uh, to Hyderabad. Joel Starr, the Deputy Assistant Secretary, Bureau of Political Military Affairs, U.S. Department of State. So with a surname like that, I don't, I don't know. I mean, your surname is Starr, so that's possibly the best inheritance, you know. Um, Joel Reifman, the Consul General, U.S. Consulate in Hyderabad. I'm glad you've chosen Hyderabad, uh, you know, for this event. As um, Consul General Reifman pointed out, Hyderabad happens to be one of the largest and one of the most strategic locations in India, especially with respect to defense and aerospace industries. I'm glad that um, U.S. Consul General here has always been um, extremely helpful, extremely active when it comes to strategic trade and bilateral engagements. Thank you, Joel, and your entire team, in fact, uh, for making several of such events happen right here in Hyderabad, ranging from the Global Entrepreneurship Summit to many, many events such as the U.S.-India defense ties that is being held today. I'm also glad, uh, Joel Starr, that uh, the U.S. administration has chosen to engage directly at the state level, not only at Delhi's level, Washington and Delhi, of course, continue to remain engaged, continue to remain uh, <clears throat> extremely uh, friendly at the president and prime minister's level, at the level of ministers, at the level of, uh, you know, the secretary of state. But I'm also delighted that you've chosen to engage with several states across our country. This, this, I believe, is extremely important in strengthening not just uh, you know, a larger policy level engagement uh, at the capital level, but also defense manufacturing capacity building, which are already you know, existing in several locations, both in India and also in the United States. India is a federal country, a federal republic, as we all know, and has a lot of progressive states which offer the best ecosystem for industrial partnerships, and Telangana, of course, I would like to believe, leads from the front. As many of you may be aware, Telangana is the fastest growing state in India, almost uh, you know, with a 14% GSDP growth rate as of 2018 and 19. This year, we may have slowed down a bit, you know, but I think uh, good times are right around the con corner. Telangana is also uh, the top state in India when it comes to the ease of doing business rankings given jointly by the World Bank and the Government of India. We've topped the charts two years in a row. As Consul General uh, Reifman pointed out, our unique industrial policy, called it the TSI Pass, is rated among one of the best in the country. In fact, I have to uh, share with you a story um, with respect to TSI Pass. We've launched it five years back, and uh, as part of my job, um, I travel the world. I also travel to the United States a couple of times. And uh, when, I went, when I met with uh, uh, one of the chairmen of the la largest consulting companies in the world, KPMG, this was about three years ago. And when I explained to him the salient features of the TSI pass, and when I told him a defense company coming in from the United States into India, and specifically to Telangana, will not require any clearance from the government. If they have a piece of land, they can start construction on day one start constructing their factory on day one. And when I told him that this process is called self-certification, he was amused. And then when I told him we give all clearances in less than 15 days, and this is empowered by statute, he was impressed. And then I also added that the legendary Indian red tape bureaucracy has bitten the dust in Telangana, and in fact, if we do not deliver on the 15-day promise, on the 16th day we have the ability to actually levy penalties and fines to the tune of rupees 1,000 per day if you hold up a clearance. He was amazed. When I told him that this possibly is one of the best policies in the country, that is India, he said, well, this possibly is one of the best in the world because no state in the United States also told me this. So let me tell you, five years later, after TSI pass has been uh, uh, passed in our state legislature, we've not only 
come out with a good policy that talks. We also have come out with a good policy that works. As was pointed out by Consul General Reifman, the largest <coughs> office spaces of Amazon in the world, a 3.1 million square foot building, was approved in less than 11 days. And as was also pointed out by Consul General Reifman, Micron Technologies, when they were looking for a strategic location to set up their research and development and engineering center, center of excellence, it was all done, you know, from you know, scratch to finish in less than a year. So that goes to show you the ability of a state to step up, to bring in reforms, to work with the industry, to engage with investors globally, to understand their needs, and lower and reduce the barriers when it comes to entering a state or a country. We believe aerospace and defense is, has got more potential. As was pointed out by Joel Starr, it is 16 billion now, 16 billion now, but I do believe that this is just the beginning. There's a lot more to be done. As part of that, let me also bring you up to speed on the strength of Hyderabad and Telangana as a state. Hyderabad has historically been a very strong defense manufacturing ecosystem with more than, um, you know, a dozen DRDO labs, which is what India's, uh, you know, national defense labs, and a lot of defense PSU establishments set up here decades ago. We also have, as a result of these labs, a strong private, ecosystem, private, private sector industry with more than 25 large companies and more than 1,000 MSMEs in aerospace and defense sector. Aerospace and defense ecosystem in Telangana has witnessed unprecedented growth in the past five years. The role of U.S. OEMs in developing the aerospace and defense industry in Hyderabad is extremely significant. In a short span of time, the state ecosystem has attracted large investments from United States OEMs such as Lockheed Martin, Boeing, GE, Pratt & Whitney, Honeywell, Collins Aerospace, etc. For example, Lockheed Martin first started manufacturing the C-130 empennages uh, from Hyderabad. Their entire factory, I'm told, was built in 11 months and production started in about 13 months. They found the ease of establishing their factory in Hyderabad much smoother and faster than any of their other production sites across the world. Today, the fuselage of U.S. presidential helicopters, Sikorsky, are made in Hyderabad. Lockheed had recently started the production of F-16 wings from Hyderabad. Subject to correction, of course. I see William looking at me. Tata Lockheed Martin is looking at doubling its capacity and expanding further in Hyderabad. The fact that Lockheed chose to bring such prestigious projects one after another in close succession indicate the confidence they have in the ecosystem in India and more particularly in Hyderabad and in Telangana. Another aspect to highlight is that the entire manufacturing is export-oriented. So it's not just make in India for India, for India's needs, but this is making in India for the world, which is where I think this ecosystem and this uh, industry has a lot to offer. It is not just the current manufacturing in Hyderabad, is not just linked to any offset or supply to Indian forces. This shows that Hyderabad has evolved as a preferred low-cost manufacturing ecosystem for global production. The real Make in India in Defense programs, successfully demonstrated by Lockheed, has attracted several other U.S. OEMs, such as Boeing, to establish their factories in Hyderabad. Aerostructures for Apache, Boeing Apache, attack helicopters and Chinook helicopters are built and exported from Hyderabad. To take another example, when GE initially decided to establish their engine manufacturing plant in Asia, they could initially think only of Japan or Korea to, that have the skill base to support complex manufacturing involved in the aero engines. However, when they started the GE aero engine facility in Hyderabad eventually, they could easily find highly skilled talent available locally. Their production started in record time also and is currently running well ahead of planned schedule. Today, we have leading OEMs such as Raytheon, BAE Systems, Collins Aerospace, Honeywell, etc., sourcing critical components and subsystems from Hyderabad-based local industries. Global aviation majors have also established their technology development, engineering, and R&D centers in Hyderabad. Among strategic Indian players, Tata Group has significantly large operations in Telangana and currently runs over 90% 
of their aerospace manufacturing from our city, Hyderabad. Other leading defense majors such as the Adani Group and Kalyani Group also have established their various aerospace and defense projects in Telangana. In terms of infrastructure, we have four dedicated aerospace parks in Hyderabad and 50 general engineering parks which are provided with high quality infrastructure for precision and engineering industry. We have in Adi Batla an aerospace SEZ which has come out to be a strong cluster which has developed in, uh, emerged into a strong cluster. Also in Nadargul Aerospace Park and in the GMR Aerospace SEZ which is uh, attached to the Hyderabad International Airport and also Adani Aerospace Park which has come up recently. A large number of aerospace and defense firms are also operating from the various electronics manufacturing clusters, hardware parks, technology parks and SEZs catering to the aerospace and defense sector. We are creating two more aerospace and defense parks to meet the increasing demand in our state. Let me also remind you that skilled workforce is an extremely important component of this industry, of this high-tech industry. Availability of abundant supply of highly skilled and industry-ready workforce has been a significant differentiator for Hyderabad. To make world-class skilling accessible at affordable rates, the state government has partnered with global institutions such as Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Cranfield University, and AeroCampus Aquitaine to offer need-based aerospace and defense certification courses in Hyderabad at relatively affordable cost. Training support for new industries is also provided through state-run skilling agency called as the TASK Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge. The government is also planning to establish a world-class aerospace university in Telangana very shortly. I invite U.S. defense majors and their training partners to be part of this initiative to create a large pool of skilled manpower for your own factories as well as for your local supply chain partners. Government of Telangana has also focused on innovation in a big way and has established several novel institutions to support innovation and startup ecosystems catering to major sectors including aerospace and defense. T-Hub is India's largest technology incubator which is a state government initiative. T-Hub has partnered with leading US OEMs such as Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, Collins Aerospace, etc. to promote and accelerate innovation in aerospace and defense industry. Boeing Horizon X and Boeing Build programs both were jointly hosted by T-Hub and Boeing. Government of Telangana is also coming up with T-Works, India's largest prototyping center for electronics, electromechanical and mechanical startups. In fact, recently T-Works has test fired a, 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 you know, an indigenously made UAV for Indian needs and for, for the growing needs of our industry. With cutting edge infrastructure and spread over 250,000 square feet of space, T-Works can facilitate more homegrown aerospace and defense hardware startups. State government has also launched what is called as RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad, for bringing research work from top scientific research institutions such as the Defense Labs and PSUs also to market. Aerospace and defense, of course, is a priority sector for Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. Various centers of excellence in aerospace and defense are also coming up in the state in partnership with industry. Thus, when it comes to aerospace and defense industry, there's no better ecosystem in India than that is offered by Telangana. I would once again urge the U.S. government agencies to directly engage more with progressive state governments like Telangana. Your industries, which have already chosen our ecosystem, we will continue to, of course, uh, you know, promote and support all of their initiatives and all of their issues. And in fact, one of the things I keep mentioning whenever I meet, um, whenever, whenever I meet top leadership managements of various industry majors, I keep telling that, that when, when you have a state as a partner, such as Telangana, to represent your issues in Delhi, to champion your issues in Delhi, to advocate and to be a pleader for you in Delhi, it will make your job easier. So when you have a state as a partner, when you have a state working with you to champion the industry cause, it only makes your job and our job easier. I appreciate U.S. Consul General in Hyderabad to take you know, this wonderful initiative on taking this wonderful initiative. 
to organize such an important conference in Hyderabad. But I do hope, Joel, that you will continue to host it in Hyderabad and not move it elsewhere in India. Once again, thank you very much, and I hope uh, you have uh, successful deliberations over the course of the next couple of days. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the next panel directly. So